There's a very big German immigrant community where my family came from, and then all the way up into Minnesota in that area. And so the cheese, the dairy, and the, the brewery business, that's what we were originally in, and we went dairy. from dairy, and then went from brewery into soda pop and dairy. So I think it was just the people brought the trade with them. I think it was just the different culture. It was kind of more of a family-based stay at home, go out, have a you know a Sunday after the football game on Friday night, or take it after church. You know that was one of the reasons yeah. we it was, we never opened till 11:30 on Sunday. Dulce de leche. You want dulce de leche? Would be yeah. you know, kind of more of a Latin flavor. Absolutely. We do, um, during kind of Cinco de Mayo era, we do uh, a sweet corn ice cream. Oh, really? That sounds um, good. We have a big Asian community, so we, we have taro root, which yeah. would be this one over here. Can I try that? Have you, yeah, sure. Have you made a batch of licorice yet? Um, he actually, he's making it today. Oh. He's making the licorice, so, that I don't think so that's the taro root. That. Yeah. <laughs> We do the taro, and we basically, again, we've learned how to do all these things by our customers that come into the store or chefs we deal with. Uh, for the Asian flavors, we do um, we do uh, taro, we do lychee, we do ginger, we do uh, green tea, several different types of green tea, depending on if it's for a Japanese customer or a Chinese customer. We do what's called a matcha green tea, which is more of a Japanese ceremonial tea. We do yuzu, which yuzu is a... It's a citrus fruit from Japan, and we make sorbet out of it. We do red bean for a lot of our Chinese customers. So it keeps us, keeps us on our toes, to say the least.